I want to talk about enumerations in C Sharp, otherwise known as enums, and the keyword looks something just like that. But what is an enum, and why should I use it? Well, I have an example right here. Here I'm setting up four video game objects. They take in various parameters. Let's take a look at the class now. So you can see it takes a console, a video game title, a video game publisher, and a rating. So let's pay attention to this rating string right here. What I want to do, I only want to allow certain ratings. So E for everyone, 10 plus, teen, mature 17 plus, etc, etc. So I only want these values to be passed in, and I only want to deal with these values. But when setting up these objects, you can see I'm putting them in here. But it's very easy to make a mistake. I could make a misspelling, maybe a lowercase, something like that. And if this application is connected to a database, then there's a bit of trouble. I'm going to be storing incorrect values, and the whole system can kind of get messed up. If someone wants to search for a game, for example, and the rating is wrong because it's been spelt wrong, then perhaps if they're searching by rating, this video game might never come up in the search. So lots of reasons why we need our data to be concise and accurate. So one way we can tackle this problem of making sure that there's no spelling mistakes for this string variable rating, for example, is to use something called an enum or an enumeration. So how do I set that up and how do I integrate it into my video game class here? Well, let's take a look. So let's come over to the right hand side here where we have our project. We're going to right click, go to add, and then go to class. We're going to call this something that represents our rating. Now, if we have a very large piece of software, we might want to be really descriptive with this. I think maybe video game rating is good. However, sometimes when you create an enumeration, you might have a class with exactly the same name, and you can't create a class with the same name. So what a lot of people do when creating an enumeration is to add the word state or type afterwards. So every time they create one, it either ends in state or type. It's really up to you, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to call it something like this. So pay attention here, you notice it's a class here. So when I click add, so if we come over to the left now, we have an internal class, video game rating type. Well, we don't want a class, we want an enum. And there was no template for that, so now we have an enum. <laughs> so it's as simple as changing class to enum, we have an enumeration right here. So how does this work? Well, let's go to our video game class here and take our allowed ratings. I'm going to put them in here as a comment so I can reference to them and I want to create an item in the enumeration for each of these ratings so I want everyone 10 plus teen mature 17 etc so I want all of these items in this enumeration and the enumeration is like a list so like a list of values and this list isn't just a list but it's like a read-only list we can't modify this information it's pretty much read-only so we use it to refer to these values it will all become clear momentarily so what I'm going to do is create some values for each of these ratings in the enumeration so I'm going to start with E which stands for everyone and once I've created one value I put a comma and then a new line now I can do the next one now there's a problem once I've typed in 10 plus, and that's because in enumerations, your items cannot contain numbers or certain characters like this plus symbol. So we're going to have to type this out. So in this case, we can say 10 plus, and that works just fine. So let's continue. Okay, so I've typed out a rough enumeration here. You can see we have all of these values reflected in the enumeration. And we can add more at a later date if we wish to. So now, how does this work? How can we put this into our class? Well, this is now kind of like a data type, really. So where we had a string rating before, we can use this enumeration right here. So if we go to our class right here, we replace string 
with video game rating type. We also replace it in the parameter and also any methods we, we may have. So here and also there. And it looks like we have one problem and that's due to accessibility. So by default, our class is internal, but because our video game class is public, we need to make the enumeration public as well. Now all those errors have gone away. So now we've actually changed the parameter to our constructor to an enumeration type. So let's have a look how we construct these objects now. So now you can see there's errors on all of these right here. Let's try to change this teen one to use our enumeration. So if I put a comma here, you can see the IntelliSense here, the autocomplete has chosen our enum for us. So we're just gonna double click that. And then we're gonna put a dot. And now you can see there's a nice list here. If someone wants to construct these objects now, they can't just put in any value look. So it requires a video game rating type, you can see in the parameter list. But now we just can't put anything. We have to choose something from this list. And if we don't, then the application won't even compile because there's an error. So you can see how this enumeration forces us to choose an item from this list. So now we can say teen, for example. Now if we replace each of these with the enumeration, So you can see when we're constructing these objects now, it's going to look something like this. So you can see this is a lot tidier, but not only that, it forces people or pieces of software or anything else to not make mistakes in our information. So you wouldn't really use this for something like maybe Blizzard or World of Warcraft, because these are kind of unique. However, perhaps the console could represent an enumeration because there's only a finite number of consoles. You know, you have the PlayStation, Xbox, or PC. So this again could be represented by an enumeration. But for something like rating, this seems like a perfect candidate to have as an enumeration. So when working with enumerations, for example, maybe these video games are stored in a database. Now this database will have the video game name, the title, and it might not have the enumeration full name in the database. It might have an integer like 0, 1, or 2. And each one of these integers might represent a different rating in the enumeration. So for example, everyone would be 0, 10 plus would be 1, teen would be 2, etc. And when you define enumerations in Visual Studio, there's an underlying type. That means in the background, by default, each one of these has a value, which is an integer. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's output one of these enumerations to the console window. So I'm just going to output video game rating type dot teen. And it's probably just going to say that on the window itself. So it just says teen. But watch what happens if I convert this to an integer. So if I run the application now, you see it has the value of 2. So by default, there's an underlying integer in here. That's because by default, the first item is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is done by default. It's default behavior. But you can actually change that if you wish. You can specify your own values for these. So by default, it looks something kind of like this. Everyone has the value of 0. This one has the value of 1. Two, three, four, five. So this is what it looks like behind the scenes. These have these integer values and you can reference them with the number or you can reference them with the name. The choice is up to you. But typically when you store something like this in maybe a database or you're passing these values to a different piece of software, then perhaps you will be sending the integer just because it's smaller and it's easier to work with. So this is why enumerations have an underlying type. So consider this as like an index, for example. But like I said, you can configure your own types, but also your own values. For example, I want this one to be 10, that one to be 20, 30, 40, 50. It, do it doesn't really matter. The choice is totally up to you. And now if we output this again to the console window, you can see teen now has a value of 22. 
And that's because we gave it the value of 22. I don't know why we did that, but you can see that's how the principle works. So basically behind the scenes, it uses an integer, but you can change this to a different data type if you wish, like a byte or a long or something like that. The choice is really up to you, but by default, it looks something like this. And if you want to change the type, you can add a colon afterwards and put the new type here. And when you have a type here, then all of these values must follow the type you specify. So perhaps this might be something you don't use immediately, but it's always good to have this knowledge in your mind for when you want to apply it at a later date. But these are the possibilities and things you can do with enumerations. What is also quite common is if you have an enumeration, for example, all of these are video game ratings, you might not want to specify a rating, but the user, you know, they're given a choice of six options, but what if it's optional? So what a lot of people tend to do, they'll define an item called none and usually give it a value of zero, or they might give it a value of 999 and put it at the end, for example. But this is just an example of how you can kind of make it optional. So none would be the optional field in this case, if it's, you know, not mandatory. Otherwise, you can select a rating right here. And again, that's just reflected by choosing the non item from the list. So there's no rating for this game, in which case it's optional. Now enumerations, there's a lot more to enumerations and you can do a lot more with them. There's a static class called enum and inside here you can use various methods to do with your enumerations. You can get the underlying type like the integer we talked about before and you can do various things. So we've kind of just scratched the surface here. But what I will mention is one thing to kind of keep your projects a little more organized. If we come over to the right here, and right click our project and what I tend to do is add a new folder right here and I usually call this enums and inside this folder I put all of my enumerations just so they're tidier <laughs> so that way because they have the same file extension as a class then you don't really get confused you can kind of hide away all your enumerations in an enum folder and if you remember when we talked about interfaces in the interface tutorial, how they have the interface keyword and not the class keyword, then you can create a folder for your interfaces as well. And this is quite common. It just keeps things organized. And simply because they have the same file extension. So if you have a very large application with hundreds of classes, you can easily find your enumerations be just because they'll all be in a directory called enums. So a nice bit of organization when working with interfaces and also enums. So enumerations, very useful. It prevents any misspellings or anything like that. And it's very useful when you have a finite list of items, for example, consoles or ratings maybe when working with suits in a deck of cards or representing months of the year or something like that but remember enumeration items are read only like constants so you can't assign anything to them so consider them as read only when working with them so that is enumerations in c sharp